so my name's Shauna Brown. I'm a tight head prop for England and Harlequins. I've got 18 caps for country and 51 caps for club. I'm doing a, a very special ask me anything. Um, I'm very much a person, the more fun in the question, the better. Like, it's nice to have all what inspires you and what keeps you in rugby and who's, but they're very like, you know, they're very everyday. So I like, I like a bit of sauce and they'll get, you'll get that in my answers. So if I go through what we've got so far, um, we've got one from Victoria Bugswell. I hope I said that right. When was your first rugby experience? Um, is the 15th of December, 2015 for Medway Rugby Club against Bishop Storford, I'm pretty sure, in level, like, there's Premiership, Championship 1, Championship 2, NC1, NC2. Look, I've even dropped off the screen, it's that low. Um, but it was as a flanker. I'd been away for three months on my diving, commercial diving course, as you do for going to Scotland for three months, learn to be a commercial diver, as you do. Pop back, and that was my first game of 15s. Um, and fun fact for you, I know nobody's asked, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So December 2015 was my first game of rugby 15s ever. And by no November 2017, I was running out for my first international cap. Fun fact, I'll let you have that one for free. Um, next question. Rugby act, another grand slam, dot, dot, dot. How did that feel? I mean, what other answer are we going to expect it apart from really good? Yeah, it felt great, of course. Great, fantastic. Z, this is my mate Z, Elema. She she is obsessed with Earl Grey and she knows exactly what I like. So I don't know, this is not even a real question. So her question is literally Earl Grey or Tetley, question mark, you must pick one. That's not an option. Obviously it's going to be Tetley because I don't like Earl Grey. But I think she's just done that to, to get a reaction from me and get her name on the pod. But we all got to play the game, right? Another one is from Rob Blunden. Best and worst roommate, club and country. So country, best roommate. Oh, this is a tricky one for me because I've had two mains, two, two main chicks. You get you have mains. Because you have you have your regulars, it makes you feel in a safe space. When you go, I tell you what you don't want to be, a little bit off topic, but what you don't want to be is unsure as to who your roommate is. You like you want to have your your go to your set roommate, like your home girl, literally like your room girl you need that in your life if you come into camp and you don't have a roommate or you're that person who sort of has been shifted out because you've either missed a couple of camps or someone else has not been around and you don't know who your roommate's going to be from camp to camp that's not a place you want to be anyway i've luckily never been that person because even when i first come into camp i had rachel burford and i'll let you know she won't like this she actually asked me to be a roommate yeah first camp and birth asked me to be a roommate I know, crazy. Um, and yeah, she's a she's a great human being. She's like my Yoda. I go to her even for now for anything in life. If I've got moral dilemmas, if I'm not sure how to ask certain questions or talk to certain people, or like I'm just just not like I need to check my moral compass sometimes. I have to check with her. But now my my go to, my home girl, my room girl is Sarah Beckett, although not now because of COVID, we have our own rooms, which is a bonus in itself. Um but it would be Sarah Beckett and she's my girl. It's, it's different. They're different to each other. If I had to pick one. Oh. Okay, I'm going to go with Sarah Beckett because she keeps me young. I am getting old. Sarah Beckett's a lot younger than me. She keeps me young. Okay, sorry. Said it. Sorry, Beth. I love you too. And worst, it's got to be, I think worst is, is a strong word. Most standout entertainment, possibly. Someone who, who I wouldn't want to be regular with, that's the easiest way I can put it, is someone we used to call CP, her name's Charlotte Pierce. Hyperactive. I, I think I'm hyper. No. I'm, I can be hyper outside of the room door. As soon as I step in the door, it's like it's chill time, big lights off, just got the side lights on, we're, we're just chilling. CP? No. Lights are on, music's on, nine o'clock's gone. Do you want a drink? Do you want a glass of water, CP? No, that's right. I've got my Lucas Aid and I've got Coke for later. CP, it's 10 o'clock at night. 
and then and then she'd be surprised as to why she's, she's, oh, she's got so much energy all the time i don't know what to do now maybe the lucas aid doesn't help i don't know i'm no expert so there you go um next one emily will dotson i'm gonna i'm gonna suggest the name's emily wilson just a suggestion what keeps you motivated just won another grand slam same question how do you feel and where do you want to go from here how do i feel we've discussed that it feels great where do i want to go from here obviously the world cup that's next that's the next big goal um who wouldn't everything i do now is about playing in the world cup everything from every training session and you have down days you think oh, i can't bothered or especially during lockdown when i have to mo motivate myself to go out and train go out and do the runs put pressure on myself to, to run in certain times and get the distances and etc and even if i felt like oh, come it's always okay sure not you want to go to a world cup you need to get outside right now or you need to run quicker right now or you need to not have that extra cider you need to not have that extra bar of chocolate you can have one bar of chocolate but you know you just don't want two on the bounce joanna joanna kb5 in your experience how have you influenced women forward slash what has worked well question mark challenges faced question mark what experience how have you influenced women um i don't, I don't always do it on purpose I, even at the moment i uh, give myself a bit of promotion. I've been nominated in the Sunday Times Sportswoman of the Year in the influencer category, which is pretty special. I know, thanks for just clapping me. Someone's clapping me on the screen. You can't see, but I can. Um, I don't, like, I don't go out to influence. A lot of the time, it, like, it's genuinely my thoughts or my processes, or I found out a bit of information either that I didn't know, and I feel, I feel like everyone should know, so I want to share it. Um, it's, it's how I feel about something or a topic or if I see people are not a, a lot of it is to do with putting things into perspective yourself but also thinking about it from somebody else's point of view so the whole point of diversity and inclusion and to get different people around the table different types of people in the room different types of people in a workplace in rugby in sport is to get a point of view from somebody else's point of view um, and for me, I, I try and think about, okay, so this, uh, a prime example, okay, so I don't have children. School holidays, I don't think about. When they come around, I'm like, does it make a difference to me? School finishes, say starts at nine, finishes at three. Um, once I had a conference booked in for 3.30 with a company and it was like, cool, yep, I was dealing with a man. He's like, yep, cool, 3.30, we'll do it. And no, he said, no, I'm signing up. And he didn't know why. And it was only once somebody came to him and said, oh, actually, that's school run time. And so a lot of us will be out of the office or, or popping out to, to get the kids to, to drop them off, et cetera. And so it's not convenient for us. So when someone says it's 3.30 on a Wednesday to me, I'm like, fine, no problem. But if I was a mum and someone said 3.30, I'd be like, well, like, that can't be done. So it's just that thinking about it from somebody else's point of view. And the fact that that's not my world and my life it's, it's okay that I don't think about it like that, but that's why we need other people in the room to just see it from somebody else's point of view. And so in terms of like, I wouldn't say I influence on purpose. I just, I just enjoy helping other people see other points of view and realizing why it is so important to have those people around. Like why, why not, why not increase the talent pool? Why not have more people doing all the good stuff in life is the short answer uh sarah kate matthews who is your favorite black ferns player i don't i'm not gonna answer that am i i can't have favorites on other countries as an insult you could ask me who is my favorite english player but you didn't you asked me about black ferns sorry sorry kate matthews i apologize can't answer that tim adams 97 what inspired you to get into rugby why not literally um yeah, it's just another one of those normal questions, isn't it? Why not? That's literally how I see, uh, that's how I put myself through life. Do you want to come and go kayaking? Mm, why not? Well, it's freezing cold outside and it's two degrees. Okay, that's fair enough. That's why not. I'm not going to go kayaking in the winter. Um, do you want to go rock climbing? Yeah, why not? There's no reason why not. Perfect. I'll see you there. Indoors as well. In winter, summer, no problem. That's 
yeah, that's basically how I got into rugby. I just knew about it, knew it existed. And at the age of 25, I went to my first rugby session because I had nothing else to do. Why not? Uh, this is a long-winded question. Bear with. Um, so, Angelique Aldworth. Do you feel the women's squad is tucked away a bit? Question mark. Can see there's some amazing characters there. Bots. Hannah Botterman. Being one, but can't help but feel they're allowed to express themselves publicly just yet. In 2020, girls and women aspiring to play need that comedy and diverse acceptance that everyone is welcome openly on display, don't we? Um, so basically, Angelique just wants me to big up bots, which I can do. She's a, she's a very much, a, she's a big character. She's an entertainer. She's a good girl. Um, I, I feel like she expresses herself. Maybe it's because when we're in camp, we spend a lot more personal time together and it's necessarily not what you guys see on camera. But she's very much, well, you'd have to ask her specifically, seeing as we're mentioning her. But I, I feel she expresses herself quite a lot. She, she says things out loud sometimes. You think, oh, I wouldn't have said that. But like she does. So she's obviously happy and comfortable. Um, are people allowed to express themselves publicly? I feel like that's that's put on by individuals feeling that they can't say that. So one of the comments I get is like, I can't believe you get away with saying these sorts of things. And I go, well, they don't get to say what they want to say. I'm like, well, what do you want to say? Well, I don't know. Right. Say what you want to say. And if there's repercussions, there's repercussions. And, and even then, like you can still say it, but just maybe change how you say it. So I do acknowledge that I get I say I get away with things sometimes, but even with getting away with it, I'm still I'm very um, deliberate with my words. Um, also, top tip: you say anything with a smile on your face, you normally get your way. People love a smile, even if you're giving them bad news. You just go like, or someone's telling you off, and you just smile at them. And they go like, coaches, Shauna, why did you do that? Oh, I don't know. I tried really hard. I go, oh, okay, I can't be angry at you now. Um, in 2020, girls and women aspiring to play need that comedy and diverse acceptance. Oh, completely. Like, you need to enjoy what you're doing, especially at the moment now. It's, it's our full-time jobs. So you have to enjoy yourself. You have to have the comedic element. Um, you have to enjoy each other's company. You get 28, 30 women in a room. Not everyone's going to get on with each other. Like, that's that's just life. Not everyone's going to be best mates. Not everyone's going to be around each other's houses. Um, if you think that, fine. But that's not real life. Uh, I tell you that now, but then it's about, you don't have to be someone's best mate to get on with them. You don't have to be someone's best mate to want to put your body on the line. Um, you don't have to be someone's best mate to want to be proud to play for your country and stand side by side with the other women who have put just as much sacrifice in to do that. Like you don't have to be best mates to respect someone. And so there's a lot of that in terms of you just, camp is what you make it so in the beginning I, I struggled with being in camp and it it wasn't the best environment for me personally like I didn't know anybody it was I felt like an outsider coming from another sport and literally just rocking up into rugby and then within a couple of years I'm in an England camp so it wasn't it wasn't my safe space as such but now I, I enjoy it I do enjoy coming into camp I enjoy the sessions and we have read something we call red sessions uh, which is the tough ones that you want to consider your life choices after a red session but once it's finished it's, it's that sense of satisfaction it's the sense that you've put your body on the line it's a sense that you're happy you've done everything you can um, and that, that keeps me happy as well and yeah we very much need characters and in terms of the characters it's the personalities which you do put out there so someone like Hannah Bottomman yeah potentially she could be put out there even more because she is more than just the rugby player in terms of her, her personality her spirit like i could have a conversation with her about something that wasn't rugby um and that's that sometimes needs to be showed off and, and for me when people ask me about rugby i'm like i don't know even interviews i'm just gonna talk about the game do we have to like we'll talk about something else because it's not it's not particularly comfortable for me but it's also not entertaining for me i try to make it entertaining but ultimately you just want to get 
people interested and, and not necessarily rugby people interested because something I find is when I'm listening to either rugby interviews or, or the commentary or punditry it's very like it's very exclusive language so you talk about I don't know hitting up the middle or you're talking about off the top like normal people who don't watch rugby don't know what that means and I get it we're watching an elite level of rugby so people should know but if we want to encourage more people to watch sometimes we have to think about maybe using different language to engage people and for other people to realize what is actually happening uh, my fa my family is a prime example I do not come from a rugby family I don't even come from a sporting family but most of my rugby games some a member of my family is there to watch me just because they want to be there to support me and he loved the beers, especially my uncle Cliff. He's, he literally comes to a game and he doesn't watch any of it because he's constantly in the bar. But even that kind of spirit of like, it's just getting out of there and being in the environment. And my mum, she's got to have been to, so I've played what, about maybe 70 games of rugby in my life. She's probably been to about 60 of them. Ask her how long a rugby game lasts. She probably can't tell you, but she loves it. And she loves being there for me and I love her being there. Um, so sometimes, yeah, we do have to, <laughs> Do you have to show off things other than rugby? Because um, what I don't like is when people are like, oh, you're a rugby player, get back in your box. Like, we don't want your opinion on politics. We don't want to know your thoughts on how inspirational Kamala Harris has been getting into the White House. Get back in your box. Um, next question. If you, from Taylor Ann Lewis. If you had three wishes for women's rugby, what would they be? Uh, more airtime, more airtime, more airtime. That's it's all about exposure, right? That's my answer there. What's your favorite post match food? I can tell you what's my least favorite post match food lasagna. Right, I used to like lasagna. I'm, okay, I'll let you into something. I don't like melted cheese. Judge me all you like. I don't like melted cheese, which means I don't like pizza. Yeah, I know. It's a good job I don't because I'd be a lot bigger and heavier if I did. Um, but like I used to like lasagna and everyone knows like every rugby club in the country produces lasagna at least once a week. And it just, it just got too much. I think it was about two seasons ago in autumn internationals. So three games on the bounce, but the, the time in between at hotels in a two week period. So what we're talking 14 days of dinner, probably had about 10 lasagnas. So, oh, so no lasagna ever again, please. Just like just a bit of chicken, do you know what I mean? A bit of chicken, a bit of rice, even if it's just one piece of chicken, a bit of coleslaw, I'll be happy. Um, but my favourite um, is actually when I get home. So you have post-match food and at the moment it's burritos are really big because they're easy to take away. Uh, but when I get home, I'll have a fat Chinese. Um, I'll tell you my Chinese order. Hot and sour soup, crispy seaweed, starters. And then I'll have duck in plum sauce and a chicken chow mein with a large egg fried rice. And I know it sounds like a lot and it is an expensive order, but I'll get about three meals out of that. So I'll have it for dinner that day. And then the next day I'll get a lunch and like a solid snack after lunch as well out of it. That's my order, that's my secret. Uh, Sarah Blasak, I think that's right. Any rituals do you, any rituals you do or lucky items you wear before, during or after games? Also, what's your favorite training and warm up drill? So first question, any rituals? No, I actively stay away from rituals and, and lucky pants or lucky socks because if one day I lose them or I haven't packed them, then it will trip me up like, oh no, like, I haven't got my lucky pants, I'm going to have a bad game. So I try and stay away from having those things. I, like I don't like to rely on something or, or someone or like even music and songs, like I try not to rely on it. So even at games, I won't necessarily have my music in. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's more of a, for me, the, the mental side of it is what happens if I don't have it one day and I don't want to deal with the stress because I can imagine it is a lot of stress. If you've worn the same pair of socks every game for the last two years in this one game, you don't have them. I can imagine it's going to get in your head. So yeah, I stay away from, from that side of things. Um, and then what's your favourite training and warm-up drill? Just don't have one, honestly. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. I'm very much a 
tunnel vision. I like being coached, I like someone telling me what to do. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. If I don't like it, I'll certainly tell you, but I'll probably like it. And then we've got Paula Bradbury. Streaming has proved there is a real appetite for women's rugby. What do you think needs to be done to secure a regular mainstream TV slot for the women's game? Um, I don't know. What needs to be done? I. What needs to be done? Uh, I guess we promote ourselves as much as we possibly can individually on our Instagrams, on our Facebooks. My Instagram's at Shauna Brown, by the way, in case you didn't know. Um, and I guess on a similar subject of, of self-promotion, so even myself at the moment, I've got a BBC Sports column going on for the period of Six Nations. And so even because of that, I'll, I'll talk about us a lot and the part behind the scenes. And again, it's about attracting people who don't necessarily watch or play rugby because we need to expand our audience. You look at the, the super sport that, that football is and, and the fans and the numbers that they get in there. Like we need to aim for that in rugby. We don't have that. Even in the men's game, we don't have those kind of numbers. So we need to do everything we can to promote ourselves as a team, but then also as individuals and back to that sort of sense of character thing and, and have, have your unique selling point, have your, like your thing that you're passionate about, have something that I can stand side by side with you to support. It's very much about like sort, sort of seeing yourself as normal and not just a rugby player, like promote yourself promote your family promote your another sport promote your work your organization like something else that you're passionate about i think is very important to have something other than rugby to talk about to, to do to be etc um here we go Loz lauren hatch one two three what are the highs and lows of your rugby career so far so highs have got to be double Six Nations Grand Slams back to back and the fact that I was part of every team in that. So whether it is on the bench or starting, I've been a part of every match involved in those two Grand Slams. So that was a great high. Lows of rugby. Um, I would say it's actually the transition from going back row to prop. It was a hard, tough year for me. It, it wasn't something I wanted to do initially. It was very much, if you want to play for England, you'll play prop. And if you want to play in the World Cup, you'll play prop. I was like, oh, okay, I'll play prop. Um, and I didn't, I didn't quite embrace it straight away enough. Um, and in the back of my head, I was like, oh, I just want to play back row, I just want to play back row. But like, eventually I just got, got my head around the fact that I'm going to play prop. And if I'm going to play prop, I, I'm going to, I want to be the best in the world at it. I want to go to a World Cup as a prop. Like I want to be the best I can. So once I came to terms with that, it was when I could move forward. But yeah, the transition from back row to prop wasn't easy. Um, would I recommend it? Unsure. Depends on your personality type. But I'm, I'm glad I've done it. I'm, I'm here now. I'm very much a tight head prop. Um, getting my own name for myself in the Allianz Premier 15s, but also with England. Um, getting my starts, getting my benches, but just constantly being involved. Getting the, one of the contracts, the 28 person contracts. So we're all good now. We're all good now. Uh, Michael White thinks he's been a bit funny. Favourite apparel brand and why? Well, obviously it's Umbro as seen because they're getting into rugby. Also, I'm a rugby... No, stop, stop that. I'm a Umbro brand ambassador as well. So what I, I would call an Umbro athlete. Um, it's about me promoting Umbro, me working with Umbro. It's, and again, like we say, oh, well, of course you're going to say Umbro. Yeah, of course I'm going to say Umbro, but for reasons why it's very much a brand that's about growth. And it's, it's always been a very predominant football brand, but the fact that Umbro have put themselves out there, have gone initially for the England rugby tender, have got it. And like, it's just keep on, keeps on growing. Like Umbro are going into so many different uh, sports at the moment it's it's the growth and, and me as a personality i'm very much about growth and i can work alongside umbro and actually suggest things that you haven't got at the moment they haven't got sports bras so it was this conversation spoke spoke to the guy i speak to and he went oh yeah good point like we'll have a chat about that in terms of the, the movement forward um and even initially when we were when it was a secret that we were becoming umbro as an england team 
we were getting this kit come in every few weeks to try on and play in um, and there'd be loads of people around us after we'd come back in from a session they'd ask us what we liked about it what we didn't like about the kit like what changes need to be made and we'd tell them in a constructive way so even if we didn't like something again it's about saying it in a way where it's it's comfortable and constructive not like oh that's rubbish what why is it rubbish what the notion is rubbish like that, that kind of language doesn't help anyone so it's potentially giving them a problem but also maybe giving them a solution but anyway people were coming in with this kit and saying what changes would you make we would tell them a few weeks later they'd be back with some changes right how about now oh yeah this is good but now this needs fixing again went away and they even came to our club at one point um, to get us an extra session to try it on and again there was very much interested in our thoughts on it after we trained in it and, and what we would think and they'd take it away and come back and fix and for me that that's huge that's actually people interested in what we've got to say and not only do they seem to be interested but then they're action in it and that's that's a, that's a big thing for growth and moving forward and acknowledging that they are they're not the experts in rugby and that we are in terms of what we want to wear so why not ask the people that you're going to be clothing to wear it so yeah for me, yeah, Umbro's a, a big growth brand at the moment and yeah, very much a, a fan of that. Um, Philippa Andrews, you had numerous jobs before becoming a full-time professional rugby player. Correct. After rugby, would you go back to any of them? Or if not, what do you fancy doing post-rugby? Would I go back to any of them? So I could, I could very easily go, well, I say very easily, I could go back into diving, commercial diving, because my certificates last, I'll just need my medical, but my certificates are, are lifelong. It would just, be getting work which is the tough bit and why i struggled with it in the first place um, getting work is is hard because you're self-employed and you just have to literally beg people to employ you um and then my, my most recent one firefighter yeah definitely so i'm currently on a three-year sabbatical so it's very much just an email send away of going back in and and of course i would have to go back in on their terms in terms of when i could go i couldn't send an email on monday and be back in on tuesday but it's literally uh, like i'm ready to come back now to be a firefighter and i'll be back in so that's a huge safety net for me and a bonus that so many people don't have and, and when people i get loads of people asking me especially who look after people post professional sport and they'll ask me hey can you thought about your career after rugby do you need any help can i give you any support any career advice blah, blah, blah. i'm like honestly i'm sorted like i've i've got my job in the fire service to go back to I'm very happy to go back to being a firefighter. If something else comes up, then hey ho, but I'm very much firefighter is is where I can go and it, it is my safety net. Uh, what was the other half of the question? And um, what do I fancy doing post rugby? Yeah, if I'm not being a firefighter, who knows? I wouldn't I wouldn't put a I wouldn't put a title on it. I'm very much a free spirit. If you've got any suggestions, I'm open to them as well. But like I say, safety net is being a firefighter. Also, congratulations on your Women of the Match against us for this weekend. Thanks. 23 carries. 23 carries. Yeah, I know. That's what I enjoy doing. Um, L. Emerson, you came to rugby late. What novice mistakes did you make in your first few rugby games or even training sessions? Um, what? Exactly because I was a novice, I didn't know I was making the mistakes. Gave away a lot of penalties. Um, but I mean, I still do that now. What novice mistakes? Just generally being quite worthless and not knowing where to be. Now it's just being a bit smarter with not like starting that way to the pitch, starting that way across the pitch, and just like just being a headless chicken, just chilling where I am, seeing what, what's going on over there, what shape that they're taking. Can I wait here for the ball to come to me? Yes. Well, I'm going to wait here then. Um, it's just learning the game, I guess. It's not really. There's not really things I used to keep doing wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong. It's just generally being even more whatless than I am now. And I'm still quite whatless, to be fair. A lot of the time, I don't have a clue what's going on. But I know enough, and that's what matters. And then we've got one from the good, the bad, and the rugby. What was the last thing you tried to do to look cool but ended in utter embarrassment? Mm. I always look cool in everything I do. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's obviously not true. But a specific occasion, oh, I don't know. I can't answer that one. I'd have to really think about it. But because I've got that sort of 
no Fs given. If I want to do something, I'll go and do it. And if I look silly, but I'm enjoying myself, that's what matters. Um, yeah. And if only if I get like booed, like completely booed, like get off, go away. Bro. I'm like, oh, I feel like so small right now. But generally, even if I look like a buffoon, as long as I'm happy, and especially if I've got my, my main hype woman, Sarah Beckett, dancing with me as well, I normally involve dancing and singing because I can't dance and I also cannot sing. It doesn't stop me from doing not doing it though. Um, so as long as I've got her by my side and we're dancing and singing together, we, we take on the world. Yeah. So that is all my questions. What else do I need to mention? So I've got my Sunday Times Sportswoman of the Year nomination in, Influencer Award. Got my BBC sports column going on at the moment for loads of behind the scenes goss. That's that's cool because again, it's not too much actual rugby, it's more more of the fun stuff behind the scenes. Um yeah, my Instagram, my Twitter, it's all Shauna Brown. I'll let you guess how to spell that. Oh, here's a top hint for you. If you're ever asking somebody to do something for you, like a video or a, a congratulations or even asking them for a bit of kit because you want to do like a charity, you want to do a freebie and you want me to give you something cool. Just spell my name right, please. Especially if you're messaging me on social media. Right, so this is my phone. Okay, we'll even get my phone up. This is my phone, right? My name is honestly going to be at the top of your screen. You're, you're typing here. I'll, I'll get it up right now. We'll get it up right now. All right. Good. Right. This is okay. This is... Not too much private info. Good, bad, and rugby. Okay, up there. Look, my name is going to be right there. So when you type in here, please spell my name right. Make, it makes me genuinely happy when people spell my name right. Honestly, so happy. So that was Ask Me Anything with me, Shauna Brown. Any more questions? You can ask me, whether I'm some or not, undecided. But more unique, the better. And the more fun, the better. Until next time. Bye.